Good day everyone, my name is Arslan and uh, welcome to the third dimension. We're back with the Revit structure. In today's video, we're going to talk about uh, navigation, selection, grids and levels. So today's the second video from our Revit structure series. So let's get started. Uh, here's Revit and uh, let's press new. Let's go to metric structure template or imperial if you want feet or inches. We'll go for metric. And uh, okay, so the first thing you do when Revit starts is the units. You can do that by going to manage and then project units, or you could just press UN, which is even written here in front of you guys. So let's press UN and I will get directly to the project units. Let's go to length, let's change this to centimeters and to one decimal place, which is the rounding and the unit symbol to centimeters. Here you go. So once the unit, units are set, you could start working. So let's firstly draw a sample structure so that it's easier for me to explain everything. Okay, this is a sample structure. Don't worry about it. I'm going to explain everything later on. So as far as navigation and Revit is concerned, scroll wheel, the, your mouse wheel, and your shift key and your keyboard are the two main things you're going to use the most. So scroll wheel and the shift key. So if you scroll inside, if you scroll away from yourself, that's zooming in. And if you scroll towards yourself, that's zooming out. Similarly, panning around is by holding on to the scroll wheel. So that's panning around and zooming in and zooming out is by pressing the scroll or by scrolling inside, you would zoom in and scrolling out, that zoom out. And holding the scroll wheel and moving around, that's panning around. So similarly, this is in 2D space. If you go to 3D by pressing, by going to the quick access toolbar and default 3D view, then let's go to the visibility settings that is set to realistic. And in this case, orbiting around is by holding the shift key and the scroll wheel. So that's how you orbit around. So zoom in, zoom out, move around, pan around, and orbit by holding on to the shift key and the scroll wheel so the next thing is working on your models or the views you have in revit well in revit we have about three to you know four or five i believe different ways of working on your models and uh, i would even like to put it this way that the user of revit is in a fourth dimension because you're looking the model you have in front of you is a three-dimensional model and you are in the fourth dimension looking at the third dimension so I believe that uh, I hope that makes sense. Well, we're going to find out in a in a while. For example, the model you have, the x-axis is the first dimension, the y is its second, and the z-axis is its third. And you're looking to all the three dimensions that are right here. So you, as a user of Revit, is sitting in a fourth dimension space. I hope that makes sense. So the first way of working on your models is your top view. We can do that by on the right side by pressing on level 1. This is the top view of your model. And uh, similarly in level 2, again we are in the top view. And the range, the visibility range, we can do that by pressing VR. So at the bottom range, let's set it to unlimited. And the levels, the view depth, let's set that to unlimited too. So you're working on level 2 right now. And this is the top view of looking into your models. Then similarly we have the front and the side, the elevations. We can change that by the right side here. And these are the elevations you have. So the left and the right way of, you know, seeing your models, that's how we do it from here. Similarly, then the third way of working on your models is your 3D space, or is your 3D view, which is, I believe, the most useful one and the one you're going to use the most. So we can access that by this button right here in your quick access toolbar, the default 3D view. So the fourth way of working on your model is on the left side, you could see the section box right here. This section box, if we press it, uh, if we press it, it act activates it. And now if we select the section box, we can change it. So this is an, again, another, view, another way of working on your models or viewing your models. That's how we, we view different parts in Revit. Similarly, if we uh, uncheck this, so it would get back to normal. And um, then the last way of working on your models is by pressing any element 
and uh, by pressing the visibility option right here which is temporary hide and isolate so if we press this and then we go and we isolate that element so now the rest of the element the rest of the elements or the models are are hidden and uh, this is the only one which you can work on so this is another way of working in Revit which is the isolated view you know you isolate an element from the rest of the model and you work on it so these are the four different ways of working on your models these are the four different views we have in Revit let's get back to normal reset temporary hide and isolate and everything's going to get back to normal okay so the next we have is the level and the views on the grids so let's decrease the size of the structure a bit so it's easier for us to look into the levels so we can access the levels by this right section here in the project browser for example if we press the south so this is the side view of our project the you know you're looking into the project on the southern side you're standing on the southern side and you're looking into the project so by default we have two levels right here this is the name and this is the value we can change the name by just pressing on it twice and uh, let's say zero one and ground flow and it says would you like to rename the corresponding views if you press yes here then the name in your working window and in your project browser is going to change while if you press no then it's only going to change in the working window so for example let's press yes in this case so now as you can see the name changed in the structural plans also which is ground flow and because we changed it right here so and in the structural plans we have by default two levels and the analytical or level one in lattical is for structural analysis so let's delete this for this while because we don't we're not going to do structural analysis right now delete for both of them so now the name of the ground flow has changed even in the structural plans for level two let's again change the name in this case let's press no Yes, so as you can see in the working window, we have changed the name to first flow, but in your project browser, it's not changed. So this was my point. So now this is the first flow and the ground flow, and these are the values. We can even change that by just pressing it. Let's set it to 350 centimeters, and in the working and the, the model that you've created is also automatically going to change. So that's the best thing about Revit. Everything is connected. You change one and it's going to change throughout your your file so similarly we can create new levels by just pressing on level and they're going to copy and uh, you know this vertical distance it automatically shows you that or you can even just type it in for example let's type in 300 centimeters and here you go that's the new level created and you know in some cases as you can see the color of this is black while it's blue why is that because we have a level in our working window, but we don't have a level in our project browser. Have you guys noted this right now? So, so how do we change it? We can change this by going to the view. We want a view. We want this level to be in our project browser. We go to the view and then we press on plan views and then we go to structural plans. And in the structural plans. We can select any level that's not showing us in the project browser and we can press OK. So now, as you can see, we have that level shown to us. So if you go back to our southern side, now it's the color of this is, has also changed to blue instead of black. And uh, let's press this and let's rename it 03. So that would be the second flow. Yes. And uh, as you can see, it's changed. This is the first flow so these are levels in Revit and uh, for example if you press on level and if you check this box so the information it has will also be shown on both this, both the sides now now you have its properties and information on both sides similarly you know there is another option which is for moving what does this lock show us that we have for example if you want to change the the space or you could say the, the position of this level you know you can do that by just dragging this part right here 
But the thing about this is that it's connected to the other levels. So if you move it, even the other levels are going to move. So let's undo this and instead let's unlock it from the other two levels by pressing right here. If you just press it, then now it's unlocked. So now if we move this, as you can see, the other two levels are not moving. So this is another point in levels. You can even create more levels by going to the architectural and uh, let's let's check this datum section out. The levels are in the datum section. Here you go. This is levels. And you know, as you previously saw that whenever we create a level, automatically our structure plans and our ceiling plans are also being created. So how do we change that? Well, once we press levels in our architectural datum, so this section right here is going to show us which select view types to create so we do not want floor plans and we don't want ceiling plans we only want structure plans so now in this case it's only a structural plan is going to be made here we go and it even shows us the automatic this vertical reference line so that it's all leveled up so here we go now as you can see let's change this to 04 Yes, so as you can see on the right side, another level is automatically created in your project browser. So that, these are levels in Revit. And uh, let's arrange this back to its position. And it's automatically going to show you that reference line, as you guys can see. Similarly, as I previously said, you can create more levels by just pressing on level and uh, going to copy. And then you can type the distance in, or you can just follow the one that's showing you. For example, 300 centimeters so that's how that's a new level created and uh, you can even create another level by create similar but then in this case it's not gonna allow you to move vertically upwards so I believe copy is a better option and uh, as I previously said you know again the color of this is black while the other ones are blue let's change this name so that it's easy for us to understand and uh, eight so the level eight is not showing this in the project browser. So how do you change that? Let's go to view and plan views, structural plans. And here you go, the level, the level eight, which I was talking about. If you press okay, now on the right side on the project browser, the level eight is showing. So that's how we create levels in our working space and in our project browser. So these are levels in Revit, which is actually the side view of your project. This is the structure that we have. So thank you and uh, stay tuned for the other video.